There's a popular narrative about the U.S. economy that we are at or very near so-called full employment. The U.S. unemployment rate has dropped below 5%. It is at 4.9%. If you listen to the news or read the papers, you've surely seen stories reporting that we're creating new jobs month after month. A business and information system, 63,000 net new jobs there. Healthcare. That personal wealth and stock markets are hitting or near all-time highs, and that the unemployment rate is plummeting. And that's all true as far as it goes, but that's not the whole story. One of the reasons the unemployment rate is down so far is because a lot of people have been moving out of the workforce altogether. There are three different categories of employment status for adult Americans. You can be employed, you can be unemployed, or you can be completely out of the workforce, neither working nor looking for work. The unemployment rate only measures the percentage of people who are in the workforce looking for work who don't have jobs. It completely ignores those people who have neither jobs nor are looking for them. And as it happens, that group is the fastest growing demographic group for male Americans and has been for two generations. It's an invisible crisis. If we take a look at the work rate, as opposed to the unemployment rate, we get a very different picture of what's happened in America over the last 50 years. The work rate in the United States is calculated as the number of employed people out of any given civilian, non-institutional population group. That would be people who aren't in the armed forces, people who aren't behind bars, people who aren't hospitalized, people who aren't in other sorts of institutions. Just pay attention to guys for a second, to adult men. If you take a look at the unemployment rate, today that is lower than it has been for most of the post-war era. That would suggest that things are going along pretty well. If you look instead at the employment to population ratio for adult men, that is lower than it was in 1940, at the tail end of the Depression. The unemployment rate was a totally logical way of looking at the health of the labor market and more generally of the economy at a time when there was no alternative to work except unemployment and the threat of destitution therewith. With the rise of prosperity in modern America, with the rise of our social safety net, there now is a third option for working age men, which is being out of the labor force altogether. And thus we have seen over the past 50 years, the proportion of men over the age of 20 without any work has gone from about 19% to almost a third, to 32%. And if you look at the critical prime working age group, the 25 to 54 year old guys, uh, worklessness has exploded from them. It's gone from about 6% to about 15%. Clearly today, it is possible for large numbers of men to live without any paid work. So you can call it a lifestyle, if you will. And there are very particular aspects to this lifestyle that are revealed in self-reported time use surveys. Among the seven million men who are neither working nor looking for work in this prime work age group, about a tenth are adult students. Their time use patterns don't look that different from employed guys. Um, if you look at the rest of this enormous population, the so-called NEETs, neither employed nor in education or training, it's a pretty dispiriting picture. What they do by their own reports is watch. They spend over 2,000 hours a year in front of screens. Television, video, internet, handheld devices. This is their job. 
their job as being out of the economy and out of civil society, and that's not a promising future. One of the fascinating things about the demographics of unworking male America are the surprises. We can talk about the general trends. For example, the disproportionate representation of African Americans. But uh, if you take a look at black immigrants, for example, they are more likely to be in the workforce than native-born whites. If you take a look at married black men, they are more likely to be in the workforce than unmarried whites. We know that education brings all sorts of advantages, uh, but if we take a look at married high school dropouts, their workforce participation rate is about the same as unmarried college grads. So marriage can trump education, marriage can trump ethnicity. The decision to immigrate can likewise trump ethnicity and education. There's individual volition that we see in these statistics, and that kind of matters as well, because there are big social influences, but people also have some determination over their own fate. Clearly, big macro structural changes in the economy have been part of the picture. We talk about globalization, about outsourcing, the decline of manufacturing jobs in the United States, and slower growth. All of that's clearly been a big part of it. But economic changes, I don't think, can explain all of this. For one thing, if we take a look at the decline in workforce participation rates for prime age guys, you can draw almost a straight line from 65 to today, irrespective of economic conditions at any point along the way. That doesn't look like something that's being propelled entirely by the business cycle, right? We've had other things that have been going on as well. The transformation of the American family, the rise of the welfare state, and the rise of programs like the government disability programs. We've also had an extraordinary explosion of criminality over the last 50 years in the United States. You have to think about what that does to prospects for reintegrating into the labor market. I wish I could tell you more about that, but scandalously, the United States government doesn't even collect basic social and economic data on the 20 million Americans who have some sort of a criminal record in their past, but are in society at large at the moment. When you take a look at the evidence we have with respect to the personal effects, not the social effects, it's a pretty sad tableau. Unworking men report much higher rates of illegal drug use than working men or even unemployed men. There's new research to show that very high proportion of unworking men use painkillers every day, whether legally prescribed for them or not. Think of that, this lifestyle of sitting in front of the TV on painkillers all day long. The collapse of work for men is an omnidirectional catastrophe. It is associated with slower economic growth for our nation, with widening economic gaps and widening wealth gaps in our society, with bigger budget deficits, bigger public debt, bigger government dependence, with more fragile families, with less social mobility, with less participation in civil society, and with a less healthy democratic body politic. We're not going to turn this situation around until we shine a spotlight on it. This is going to require a consensus from people on different sides of the political spectrum recognize this problem for the enormous crisis that it is. I mean, just think of this. If we were at 1965 work rates today, almost 10 million more guys would have paid work in America today. Think of how different our nation would be if that were the country we were living in. If we continue to ignore this problem, 
it's not only going to continue to fester. I think we've got every reason to expect that it's going to worsen.